the Guggenheim Museum is celebrating its 50th with a comprehensive show of its architect, Frank Lloyd Wright. It's a stunning show with 64 projects, ranging from the entire city of Baghdad to a car objective and planetarian combo, if you please, a mile-high tower in Chicago, and for me the best, private residences. He invented wholly new and workable design features that will last forever. The severely cantilevered roof, as in the quintessential Roby house. The open plan, the living room, the merging of outdoors and indoors. Frank Lloyd Wright has always been staggering, staggeringly great and sometimes staggeringly stupid. As with the Guggenheim Museum, it really doesn't work, it never has as a museum, but it still is the most exciting, large walk-in sculpture in the world. The Frank Lloyd Wright experience in New York would not be complete without a visit to this marvelous living room at the Metropolitan Museum of Art from the Wayzata home of the Little family built in 1913. This living room epitomizes Frank Lloyd Wright's organic architecture and his dictatorial architecture. Everything in the house was designed by him. The chairs, the clocks, the sconces, the kitchen utensils. I was able to buy the Little House from the Stevenson family. Stevenson's wife was the daughter of the Littles. For $150,000, Ray Stevenson said in a frigid day in February, and this house was unheated, he said over a martini, he said, do you think 150 would do? And I wasn't quite sure what he meant. I said, done. We were able to sell several rooms and some furniture and stained glass for a lot more money than that so we could take the house down and move it and bring it to the Metropolitan Museum of Art.